Hi everyone, Gabrielle here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this print with the two koi um, using layers and masks. Um, it's a little bit more complicated this one and I've had to speed it up a fair bit because otherwise it would take forever but I've left some notes also that you can download so that will give you a bit more of an idea. So the first thing I'm doing here is just printing a very fine layer of light blue and this is going to give the pattern for the scales for the koi. So you can see here I'm using a texture plate um, that's meant for cake decorating so it's a fondant texture plate that has a scale pattern. If you don't have that that's fine you can also use um, you can use a net bag that you might get from onions or things so I'm using that here and that also creates beautiful scale patterns so use whatever you have to experiment with. It's important that this layer stays quite light because you want it to be you really want those cup to be kind of white um, just with a tiny bit of shadow and background. Here I'm to pull the print I'm just putting a really light layer of um, that that um, came out white over the top. The very cheap um, acrylic works well. And you can see here I've taped my, I'm using watercolour paper, um, hot press watercolour paper because I'm going to be painting on it later and it holds up better. You can see when I hold it up here you can see the scale patterns um, that came out quite well there and I've taped around the edge of my watercolour paper just so that I get a nice sharp edge and I don't have to worry about trying to match up the layers. So here we're onto the second layer now. I've rolled out some Payne's grey and a bit of blue, um, wanting a kind of reasonably thick layer. And here I'm using, for the texture here, it's actually like a non-slip bath mat that you can get at a $2 shop. Um, it works really well. If you don't have that, that's fine too. You can use any kind of stencil that has a sort of pebbly shape, or you could cut out kind of foam shapes and stick them on some cardboard, like stone shapes. And that would work really well. There's a whole range of ways you could get the stone texture. It's not that essential. And what I'm doing now is um, just sponging on. So once I've once the print underneath is dry, once that's dry on the plate, then I've mixed up some green and blue, and I'm just going in and sponging to give it a bit of a sense of like moss growing on the rocks, but also to make it a bit darker because I want it to contrast well with the the koi when we paint those on. And now we're about to pull the print again, another fine layer of the white. But this time before we put the print on, I'm actually adding these cardboard shapes that I've just cut out and I've given you the pattern for those. Now putting the same um, piece that we'd already printed the scales on and then pulling the print. After You can wait a little while so that it prints well. You can see it came out well, although the, the outline was a little bit fuzzy. It's, it's sort of a bit of a... Um, kind of a bit of a halo around the edges of those fish. It makes them look very fat indeed. So what I'm doing now, so the rest of the video really is about painting these carp to make them look three dimensional and make them look like they're swimming over the rocks. So what I've done here is I've mixed up some Payne's grey and some blue, the same kind of shades that we used for the, the rocks underneath so that it will blend well. And I'm just outlining the, the fish um, here so that they stand out well from the background and also tidying up those edges that didn't print quite as crisply as we would have liked. You can see just going around adding a bit of a, a kind of wash around that's a bit like a shadow where the fish are casting a shadow on the rocks underneath. Um, so yeah that's just a bit, it takes a little while. You can just use really light washes is a good way to start rather than too much heavy colour. I'm diluting with water and you can see here I'm using a little bit more of the Payne's grey mainly here and I've diluted it quite a lot with some water and just using a fine brush just going around and adding some depth here. So you can see when you shade along the side of the koi it actually really makes them look three-dimensional and particularly when you put that sort of line down the side of their fins it makes the fins look like they're down the bottom and the fish is kind of um, um, coming towards us you know in, in some way so that that when you paint things darker it makes them look like they recede and then the light parts of the picture look like they're coming more towards you so you're using that to kind of create this three-dimensional illusion and now I'm just going through and adding a bit more detail on the fins so I wanted the fins to look a bit transparent because when I'd looked at photographs of koi you could see that the fins weren't as 
as opaque as the rest of the fish. They actually look like you can see a bit of the, the rocks and the background coming through underneath. So I used a bit more of the, the blue-green to paint in the details just to make them look a bit more um, translucent. And I'm coming in here with some white because the koi have a, a fin along their back um, that it, so the pure white kind of looks like it's even closer towards us where that fin is and also just painting in their little whiskers a bit more. Now I've mixed up some, I've just got some red here. When you're putting the, the colour on for the, the, the pattern of the fish, it works really well if you don't just kind of paint a shape like with an outline, because when you look at pictures of the fish, they don't have a sharp outline around those kind of blotchy bits. So if you just pat the colour on a bit with little brush strokes, just sort of plonking the colour down with patting strokes, so that the edges are really kind of uneven and mottly looking, it gives it more of a realistic look than painting in a spot um, that you, you might otherwise do. So you can see I've just kind of patted it in and really random like I just kind of decided where to, to add those spots and just went with it and then I've added some more spots here with some Payne's grey and so again kind of just making a little bit more of a link to the colour below using that Payne's grey and you can see I'd also painted in their eyes with Payne's grey. So those last little bits of, of just those details and really there's you know all fish are different so whatever you do is right <laughs> there's there's no right or wrong with with the patterns on these but if you wanted to you could look at um, some pictures of koi for inspiration they, they have all different patterns and colors they're very beautiful and just a last um, bit more shadow what I found when when you're trying to do the shadows if you do a really um, tight shadow right around the fish just really close it makes it look like the fish is like sitting right on the rocks if you want to give it a bit more of a sense of depth like it's swimming over the top of the rocks then you need to make the shadow a bit bit kind of bigger and broader and that way it will look like it's a bit lower <laughs> so it's a bit of trial and error but I'm just adding a bit more shadow here and then the final step I found this a bit hard but to because what you want to do now is to make it look like the water is actually the fish are in the water they're not just kind of sitting on dry rocks so to, to do that it works really well if you do some ripple um, painting and to do that really diluted white so you don't want a sharp line of white you want white mixed with quite a bit of water and you don't want to paint a whole circle all the way around you just want to kind of paint the bits where it might catch the light so and I started kind of a little bit tentatively and then I kind of build up the courage to paint over my fish um, you can see here but what what works really well and what makes it look quite three-dimensional and like the fish are underneath the ripples is if you can make the ripples actually go over the top of the fish in a place where it will show up so particularly if you look um, where those red red spots are if you can make the ripples go over the top of one of those red spots then it really gives that illusion that the fish are underneath the water so I think you can see that I'm painting over the top there and but it is a bit hard like it, when you've done this and you like it it's hard to kind of paint these big white lines over the top but it is I promise it's very effective when you do it if it doesn't work if you do something where you, you know you're really unhappy with it if you have um, a paper towel or a tissue you can very quickly blot before it dries and, and get rid of things that you don't like so you don't have to be too worried just wait for each layer to dry first um, yeah so that was really the the final touch on the fish and i was kind of happy with how that came out and after that it was really just a matter of removing the tape and our fish were done a few more little ripples you can always look at pictures. I was trying to go for a bit of a, a circle shape here. Um, so it looks like, you know, when you throw a rock into a pond, it creates that circular shape. And I was thinking that, that maybe the, the fish swimming around together would create that kind of circle. Um, it just sort of adds that to that composition. And here I'm just removing the tape quickly. And it, it, it looks really nice. I ended up taping all the way around because otherwise I'm so messy, I get um, paint on the bottom if I just do one, one strip of paint, so one strip of tape. So I taped it all up. And there we are, there's our fish. I hope you have a lot of fun playing with this. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.